Let's talk about Jesus. Today I want to talk to you about Jesus after he had died and rose again and him appearing to several people and their responses and what Jesus did. Um, you know, it is possible for us to get so caught up, and I'm speaking from personal experience, <clears throat> get so caught up in being able to keep the law that I lose sight that the Christian walk and being in relationship with him is all about him and not about me. Um, in the last decades, the sermons that I've heard have turned to psychobabble in a lot of ways. It's all about you. It's all about what you're doing and you, 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 you. And we're always striving and trying and not receiving what Jesus has done for us. But I want to show you today in the scriptures how Jesus um, revealed himself to those that saw him. And the first account is in John. Jesus has been crucified and he's risen from the dead and Mary has gone to find Jesus and the tomb was empty. So I'm going to read out of John chapter 20 verses 14 through 16. She, Mary, turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. He's standing right there. He's looking at him. She did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. So she's standing there talking with Jesus. She's looking at him, but she does not recognize him. The revelation of who he is has not dawned on her consciousness. And so she supposes him to be the gardener. Now, is this um, a, a small thing? No, I am finding that there are no words wasted in the Bible. If there's a description there, if there's something that's being said, it's being said for a reason. So she supposed him to be a, the gardener. So we see in the scriptures that it talks about Adam the first Adam, that Jesus is the second Adam. So who was the first gardener? Adam. Who was the second Adam or gardener was Jesus. Isn't that interesting that she would mistake him for the gardener? That she, of course, it was a garden and it was a tomb and she supposed that. But again, I don't believe there's any uh, mistake in the words, but he was mistaken as a gardener because he was the second Adam. So Jesus reveals himself to her and she sees them and then she goes and tells the disciple. The next uh, scripture I want to read to you is in Luke chapter 14. Uh, starting in verse 13. And here is where Jesus comes up upon these two men walking on the road to Emmaus, which was about a seven mile journey to Jerusalem. And so Jesus joins himself to these, these two men and has conversation with them. And it says, that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing them. So then Jesus asked them, what are you all talking about? What's happened? And they said, you must be the only person that's been around here that doesn't know what happened. And Jesus said, what things? And he said, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said, he was a prophet. Now listen to their description. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. And, um, but our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. Now listen, we had hoped that he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. 
We're going to continue on there. But listen, they had thrown over their hope. It's past tense. We had hoped. But even when they talked about him being a prophet, when they talk about him being a miracle worker, worker they never talked about him being the son of God. And so they had hope. They'd now thrown away their hope. So the script, so it goes on. And so um, they, they tell Jesus that they heard that um, his body was missing, but now they've heard reports that he's alive. And so they're very excited about this and they're wanting to see. And then what was Jesus' response? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Jesus is talking about himself. He's trying to show these men from Moses through the prophets in the scriptures all the things that he had to suffer, the things that Jesus was doing. He's revealing himself. Isn't it interesting too in, the, in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus went to the temple and it says that he got up to do the reading that day and he read, they have prescribed readings that they do at certain times, and that, that day the reading was out of Isaiah and he read about himself, about that he was anointed and it talked about all those things in, in Luke chapter 4. And so here is Jesus once again revealing himself, talking about himself, about the things he had done. Not the things that they should do, but the things he had done. There was the importance thing. So they went on and it says, by this time they were nearing Emmaus and at the end of their journey. Jesus acted as he were going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it is getting late. So he went home with them, and as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them, and suddenly their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and then he disappeared. But then this was their conversation. Didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Didn't our hearts burn within us? As Jesus began to reveal himself and to see himself in the scriptures, their heart was burning. It was giving confirmation to them. And then when they finally recognized, their eyes were open, they recognized who he was, and then he disappeared out of their midst. How many times is Jesus among us? But we, and even we can get excited, our heart burns within us, but we still don't recognize that he is there. It is important that we see him, that we see that he is revealed to us through all the scriptures. I'm doing a study now that I'm working on, and I'm finding that, you know, when we um, attribute in the truth to Jesus Christ, that he uh, suffered and died and was resurrected, and his, his blood was the, the, once, the, the offering once and for all for us, that he bore all of our sins and now our sins are washed away. But if that's all we think was done at Calvary and through his life and all of that, we have greatly been of short sight. We have sold him for a shallow portion of all that Jesus has done for us. So he wants to reveal himself to us so that we see him as he is. So then we go on down into, back into John uh, chapter 20, and now we're gonna be in verse 19, and we're gonna read uh, from 19 down through 29, a few verses in there. Then Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. You know, if that happened to Jesus, they were guilty by association, so what is the chance um, that the Jewish leaders are coming for them as well. It probably was a great chance, at least in their own mind. And suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. So Jesus appears. Out of nowhere, he just comes through the wall. He's there in their midst. And then he says, peace to you. It doesn't say that he laid hands on them or anything, 
But what did he do? He showed them himself. He showed them the wound in his side. He showed them his hands. He showed them himself. And they were to get peace from that. I talked about this in an earlier teaching about how many times we're trying to get things from God separately as if it's uh, de detached from him. I need wisdom. I need um, finances. I need uh, uh, peace. I need whatever I need. I need direction as if it's separate from him, but it's him. It's in him. And so Jesus showed himself. So then we have Thomas who was absent on Sunday night. Now he's in the midst of them. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Again, he says, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer, believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas explained. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Again, look at the reaction of Jesus. Thomas says, you know what? I'm not going to believe. I hear what you're saying, but I won't believe until I put my fingers in the wounds in his hand and put my hand into the wound in his side. I won't believe. So what is God's response? Jesus comes and gives him exactly what he said he needed to believe. He gave him exactly what he said he needed to believe. But I find sometimes I can be looking at something I still don't believe what I see. But what did Jesus do? Again, he showed him himself. Look at the wounds. Look what I did. I. And, and Jesus was not uh, bragging. He was not one to draw attention to himself, but he was revealing himself. I, the Messiah, I was nailed to that tree for you. I was pierced in my side that I bled for you. And as he revealed himself, Thomas said, I believe. I believe. I love the response of Jesus. You know, I heard a story one time about someone uh, who had gone to pump gas. And it was like there was a little mini mart there. And so while they're pumping gas, the person was feeling the Lord say, you need to go in there and stand on your head. And the person was like, this is crazy. And he kept feeling that impression, go in there and stand on your head. So he finished pumping his gas, then he goes into the mart, and I'm sure if it were me, I would have been kind of, you know, like waiting, making sure nobody else is around to do stuff. And so finally, I guess everybody went out except him and the cashier. And in front of the cashier, I guess in front of one of the, the rows of products, he, the person stands on his head. And the person, the cashier, begins to cry and weep. And he said, I told God, that I couldn't believe that I needed to see a sign, even if, let somebody come in and stand on their head, probably thinking that that would never happen in a million years, but it happened that day. I love how God meets us where we are. And he told him, we've heard, I've heard stories about Thomas, oh, he should have believed whatever, but even though he couldn't, Jesus came and gave him what he needed to believe. God comes to us. Jesus came and revealed himself so they could receive from him. I want to challenge you today that, in fact, I'm going to pray for you in a moment, that God opens your eyes, that Jesus could be revealed to you, that you could see him afresh and anew in ways you've never seen him before. It's so easy to get used to things that we're doing, thinking that we're earning it and not realizing that it's because of Christ. He's making it afresh and anew to me that I needed a savior.
no matter how moral I was, no matter how many laws I could keep, no matter, you know, if I didn't break the commandments, if I didn't do this and I did all that and all that, I needed a savior. So let's pray right now that Jesus reveals himself to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, our precious Lord, the son of the living God. Father, we know about Jesus. We know about him, but Father, I'm praying in these days for a fresh revelation of the spirit of the living God, of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, that we see him, that he shows us himself and all that he did for us, that there is nothing that I'm doing. The word says that it's as, uh, my, my own righteousness is as filthy rags, but he is the savior. And Father, I thank you for revelation coming to our hearts and our minds that no matter what we've heard about you, no matter if we've been in church all our life and we've heard teachings about Jesus, that Father, we see Jesus and he shows us himself so that we know him and that our relationship with him is afresh and on fire. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that God wants you to know his son. I believe Jesus wants to be revealed to you. And just like Thomas said, I, uh, unless I see the hands, unless I put my hand in his side, I won't believe. Jesus, and he came and he gave that to Thomas. He wants to reveal himself to you that you see him as he is. I believe God is going to answer the prayer that we prayed today and that you're going to see Jesus anew. God bless you.